Everything that Jesus went through was so that we could benefit, all of us that are in here this morning, so that we could benefit from his pain, his suffering, his bruising, his wounds, his scars, the bleeding, the blood that you saw. It was so that we could benefit and have an opportunity to be redeemed and experience liberty in Christ Jesus. In comparison to life insurance, before the beneficiary is able to profit from the policy, there must first be the death. However, preceding any death, a required premium for the policy must be paid. Not only paid, but paid in full that the beneficiary may receive payment. Where well, all I'm saying is Jesus paid the price. Jesus paid the price that we may benefit. I want to ask you, the price that you're paying, who's going to benefit from it? See, all of us got a cross that we got to carry. We all got things that we got to carry. And can you just for a second reflect back huh, over your life's journey? And I'm certain we all can think of moments in our lives when we were in our cross experience, suffering in some cases physical pain, mental and emotional pain and trauma. I know we just talked about what Jesus went through, but let me give you some examples of what can be a bruising and a battering and a scarring for you. Where every time life hits you with a blow, it's another thorn that has been squeezed in your head and now it's causing more excruciating pain. Every time you were told your visions and dream, every time you told your visions and dream to someone that you thought was going to support you, just to find out they, ne they never believed in your dream. <laughs> that was a blow. <laughs> you got married, was excited, not knowing that your marriage was going to end up in public divorce. That was another type of blow. Got engaged, not realizing five months after your engagement, the, in the wedding would be called off. Oh, see, you got to relate this thing to your personal experiences and your personal lives. People lied on you, talked about you, said evil things about you publicly and privately, and they and you and the world that they told knew it wasn't even true. Even at times when it was true, you certainly didn't expect them to expose your business on Facebook to everybody. Because, see, you got to understand every blow, every, every blow that life hits you, it affects your countenance. It affects your mental state of mind. It affects your, emotion, your emotional stability. People thought you would have been, people who you thought would have been there with you, just to find out that they never was with you. They was only there for what they could get from you. Mm -hmm. Got into a relationship with somebody. <laughs> Looked good to you, but you didn't realize that you was going to end up in abuse. You didn't even realize you was going to be cheated on not once, not two times, not three times, but four and five times. And for whatever reason, you still stuck with it. Mm. Didn't know it was going to get that bad, did you? Got into a relationship that you thought your family and friends would support just to find out that all they did was talk about the person that you dated. <laughs> I know y'all can identify. Yeah, had a baby. Now you, your baby daddy or your baby mama all of a sudden disappear and wants nothing to do with you nor the child. You didn't see it coming. But yet you're enduring pain and suffering. After all these years of being told that you couldn't do it, you wouldn't make it, your vision wouldn't come to pass. No one would love you. No one would date you. No one would marry you because you were an ex-con, ex-liar, ex-deceiver, ex liar ex deceiver ex Gold digger, ex-addict, ex-lesbian, ex-homosexual, babies out of wedlock, just simply not enough. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. Simply not enough. <laughs> ex-drug dealer, ex-stripper. Nobody can see any good in you. Didn't realize that when you entered into the world that you were already going to end up in a family where you was already going to feel abandonment because of generational iniquities and generational curses. And now you're trying to get free. And every time you try to get free, somebody is creating your demise. Somebody is putting you down. Somebody is talking about you. Oh, but I came to tell somebody that it's all good because there's victory in your suffering. There's victory in your pain. There can never be a resurrection except there first be a death. 
when Jesus was going through. The death was not about Jesus. The death was about him dying to his own selfish will. See, your experiences, everything that you experience is not about the other people yet. You have to go through your dying process. Once you go through your dying process and you don't make it about other people and you don't make it about yourself and you make it about him first, then you'll be resurrected out of your troubles. You'll be resurrected out of your pain and out of your suffering. Woo! Resurrect, resurrected out of it because after all of that then he died they took him off the cross put him in the grave they didn't think he was going to rise and resurrect just like people looking at you oh she ain't going to never make it oh he'll never come out of this <laughs> he won't make it out of this right here not only did they do that but they stood by the tomb how many people are standing by watching you suffer? And what they're doing is they're looking back. And they said, I wonder now, I wonder where she at. Folk coming to check on you and all they saying is, nah, they ain't gonna make it. They're not gonna come through. They're not gonna come through. And they waited. They waited by the tomb, hoping that he, wasn't he would not resurrect. Because they heard on the third day. On the third day. Now you gotta remember that the grave represented a dark place, a place of hopelessness, a place of defeat, but it also represented a place of power. That in your darkest moment, that God will reveal who you really are. It is in your darkest moment that God will show up when you don't think he's gonna show up, when nobody else is around. Now that he finally has your attention, all of a sudden, Jesus shows up. God shows up on the scene. They, they came back on the third day, checked to find out if the man was there, only to find out he was no longer present in this instant, in the year of accelerated growth. You'll find yourself going through, and all of a sudden, people are going to check on you. Are they still going through? They're laughing at you right now, but they don't know that God is about to accelerate you out of your situation. Woo! Yes, sir. God is about to accelerate you out of your situation. Oh, it's not going to end like this. It's not going to end in defeat. It's not going to end in shame. It's not going to end in, in none of that stuff. God is about to accelerate many of y'all out of y'all situation. In your dark place. Because see, you got to know, the Bible declares that you are an overcomer. By two things. The blood of the Lamb. The blood that we talked about on the cross and the word of your testimony. You cannot have a testimony unless you go and die. You cannot have a testimony unless you encounter some pain. You cannot have a testimony unless you encounter some suffering. It is in your death. It is in your death. It is in your death. Victory is yours. Power belongs to you. Yes, sir. Yes. He said, victory belongs to you. <laughs> yes, y'all see me suffering, but that's all right because my testimony. See, in the global reach of evangelism, see, God will create a testimony for you. Your pain was not in vain. Your suffering was not in vain. I started asking God, who is my beneficiary? Who's going to benefit from the pain that Kevin went through? Who's going to benefit from the abuse that Kevin experienced? Because after experiencing 20 years of abuse, I would have never imagined that so many people would benefit from my scars, benefit from my pain. When I walked around and didn't know myself, walking around shame because I went through abuse, didn't know who I was, but somehow in my valley experience. Woo! Somehow in my valley experience, I begin to share the message of Jesus Christ. People begin to see the power of God on my life. They begin to see God resurrect me out of situations that even my own self didn't think I was going to come out of. Went through things for so many years. Was in bondage for so long. And you can be in bondage for so long that it looks like it's impossible for you to not only get free, but maintain your freedom. But it was in my valley experience that God brought me out. It was in my valley experience 
that Kevin had to die to himself. I didn't realize that I had to die to myself in order that the power of God can be revealed, that victory can be sown, and then I'll experience freedom in Christ Jesus. So now when I go now, and now I'm telling the world about this man named Jesus, and now I'm evangelizing to the world and telling them about this man named Jesus that died on the cross. And he said, must all the world go free? Oh my God. And now I can tell them about the cross that Jesus did and the price that he paid. But also in evangelizing, you're able to share your testimony because everybody that you're connected to has to go through a valley experience, has to go through a cross experience, has to go through a death experience, and it won't, will not feel good. But I'm telling you, there's power in victory. There's power in your dark place. There's power in the grave. Oh, my God, because I didn't stay there. Oh, Here's the other thing. Remember that Jesus went the longest route. I know sometimes we want to let out, we want to come out of our pain and our suffering early. But let me give you the illustration of putting something in the microwave versus the oven or the slow cooker. You can put it in the microwave all you want. Or you can put it in the slow cooker or the oven. If you put it in the microwave, it don't mean that it won't taste good, but there's sure a possibility that it won't be processed thoroughly and all the heat won't get into it. But if you go the slow route, if you go the slow route, see, for you to come out, if you really want to come out with victory, you got to endure the slow route. If you really want to come out with victory, you got to endure the slow route so that God can process you thoroughly, so he can filter everything out of you. He can filter it out of you. So after you get resurrected and you realize people are still lying on you, I can still love you for real. You're still talking about me, but I don't have to let it affect me anymore. Yes, no matter what you say on social media, no matter what you say on Facebook, I now operate in the power and in the authority. I can rebuke every spirit everything that tries to come up against me through the power of the Holy Ghost I can declare the word of faith but I had to die Marvin Sapp wrote a song called my testimony and he says it like this so glad I made it I made it through in spite of the storm and the rain the heartache and the pain I'm still declaring that I made it through you see, I did not lose every loss, experiencing loss at a major cost, but I never lost faith in God. So when you see me crying, it's only a sign that I'm still alive. I have not died. I have not died. I have not died, but I'm still alive. I'm still alive with all power and all victory. I may have some scars, but I'm still alive. In spite of all the calamity, I'm still alive. He still has a plan for me, and I'm still alive because after all, it's still working for my good. All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. I'm still alive. Somebody ought to declare victory. Somebody ought to declare victory. You ought to declare victory. Hey, you ought to declare victory. You ought to declare victory. I command you to come up out of your grave clothes. Victory, I declare it. Power, I declare it. Freedom, I declare it. Share your testimony. Don't be ashamed of your testimony. There's somebody waiting to hear about your suffering. Somebody waiting on your pain. You got to go through this test. There's some ladies waiting on your story. There's some men waiting on your story. There's the world waiting on your story. You got to go through this pain. You got